All right, this is going to be a somewhat rushed video because I've been working up to the last minute trying to get things into a state where I can more visibly demonstrate what I've been working on. But I didn't really succeed, so this will mostly be a talking video. But also, I've been falling into the trap of being too perfectionist with these, so I'm going to try to break that habit and just let things be a little bit more freeform. I'm also going to stop trying to hold myself to a weekly schedule for the videos because it's both interfering with the natural course of development when I'm thinking about what's going to make a good video topic and trying to wrap up things specifically for a video, but also weeks like this where it's just hard to get things done in time for the video, it's not worth the extra stress. So I'm going to try for roughly once a week, but whenever things are behind or I just don't have a good subject, I'll probably push it back an extra week or however long I need to. So I want to start with something I missed last week. I mentioned I couldn't find a 3D curve editor built into Godot, but there actually is one. You just have to create a path node, and when that's selected, then you have the tools to edit the curve held by the path. So rather than getting into complicated physics systems to try to make ships repel each other, what I'm going to do is just create a path curve for each individual landing pad in and out and make sure that those curves don't overlap. Um, now that I have a better tool to author those curves, it's going to be a lot quicker, I think. I spent most of this week on the economy simulation. I know some people think it's already too much scope creep, but it's going to scope creep just a little bit more. Um, so for one thing, instead of using a template recipe, I'm going to actually have scripts for each business. And that's going to be something that modders can override. But this makes things a lot easier because, for instance, the mega corporations have a very simple script. They just consume labor and that's it. Or they might produce goods, but they don't need any logic for deciding when to research new recipes or for when they go out of business or anything like that. Then I've got this generic business script that handles most of the logic for your typical case. It does things like a random chance of researching and developing a new product or a random chance of expanding a production line. Uh, it figures out the most profitable things to make and it calls into these helper functions on the C++ side that actually allocate the labor and calculate prices and things like that. Then specific types of businesses just extend this to define the logic for actually crafting a new product. And that's things like stitching together a procedurally generated name and deciding the ingredients. For instance, on this cuisine business type, it will pick random food ingredients. It will take one word from one of those ingredients and then slap on a prefix and a suffix and there you've got your name. This just seemed easier than coming up with some sort of template definition that would have both optional and required ingredients and things like that. Now, right now I've got just one other script here and that's the importer. And that's so that I can just start piping in products to use as ingredients for the cuisine business so I can start testing it before I expand to more industries and more types of products. Although to be honest, this is completely untested just because I've run out of time before the video. There are a few other small things I've added to the simulation. Population now have opinions on products and only up to 50 of them. So when they discover a new favorite of something, they'll cycle out something that they care less about. And this is used just to pick when they have the money to afford more than just the cheapest option. This will be their sort of priority order. Population also now have a random chance to increase skill or get a raise. And the skill just determines their labor output per unit of time, which actually everything in this simulation is on a two minute cycle. That's partly so that the market isn't constantly changing while you're in the middle of trying to buy something. But also this lets me spread out calculations. So I'm not doing every member of the population, every business, every frame. Instead, just once every two minutes. Or um, specifically, let's say if you had 7,200 members of the population and you're running 60 frames per second, that's just one per frame. So my next steps are to start testing what I have and then expanding into more business types. I'm going to start creating some graphs to let me observe over time how many businesses there are, how much money they have, the unemployment rates, that kind of thing. And that'll help me know if the simulation is working as intended and then I can start making adjustments as needed. Now one fun side effect of simulating all these businesses is I can actually dynamically generate news for the ticker that you see in the space stations. So you might see that a business has gone out of business and now you know there's going to be a shortage of food things in a particular area. So that might help clue you in on where you might want to buy and sell to make a profit. But I also got a pretty big idea that wouldn't take much extra effort at this point. So I'm strongly considering it despite, again, the scope creep. Imagine if businesses have opinions of each other, and that can be based on things as simple as consuming products from the other business, whether they're high quality or not, and um, whether or not they steal employees from each other. Now imagine if one of the mega corporations 
in a story event attacks whoever they dislike the most. And then civilians are killed, small businesses in the station might be completely destroyed, and that would wreck the economy there. But because all this interaction that forms the opinions is simulated and you have impact on that when you trade goods, your actions can have chain reactions that cause that outcome to change, that change which station is going to be crippled. And that, I think, would make the universe feel a lot more alive than just pre-writing these fully. Having dynamic elements that depend on the simulation, I think, would be worth it. In the meantime, that's all I've got to share for this week. So as always, it really helps if you hit the like button, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching.